Hey there, welcome to the Black Forest Viking. In the forest, there are three main types of monsters you're going to come across. They are the Grey Dwarves, Skeletons and the Trolls. Let's deal with the Dwarves first. The standard Dwarves are weak to fire and also quite scared of it. As soon as you pop a torch into your hand, they're going to keep running away from you. They will continue to throw the small rocks, but they don't do an awful lot of damage anyway. So make sure you've got a torch or two whenever you go exploring in the Black Forest. You can actually use the torch as a weapon, but then the durability on it will go down. You can also equip a weapon in your main hand to do some damage and chase after them as well. As they keep running off though, it does get slightly annoying. The torch has no effect on the Grey Dwarf Shaman or the Grey Dwarf Brutes. The Shaman can spit out some poison, and this does damage you over time, so try and avoid it if possible. Keeping a torch out and then dual wielding so you can deal with the Grey Dwarf Shaman or the Brutes, whilst the smaller ones run away, is a pretty decent strategy. Just unequip the torch after, save them keep running away, and then you can chop them down quite easily. Try and explore the Black Forest in the daytime, because at night more of the Brutes and the Shaman will appear, and some of them will be 1 and 2 star, which move a lot quicker than the standard ones. So beware of the darkness. Now we've got rid of those pesky kids, let's talk about a great weapon you can actually craft yourself. From the Black Forest you need 20 of the core wood that you can get from the pine trees. See the small fir trees, just look up, you want the tall pine trees, that's where you get your core wood from. You will also need 5 deer trophies and 2 scrap leather. You've probably already got plenty of those from hunting the deers in the meadows. I highly recommend crafting this stag breaker before you venture too far into the Black Forests. It's a great all round utility weapon that will help you out in many combat situations. As soon as you've got your 20 core wood, head back to your base to craft the stag breaker. Last thing to sort out before you can craft your stag breaker, you've got to upgrade your workbench to level 2. To upgrade your workbench to level 2, all you need is your chopping block. Any of the icons you see marked with a star, this means they're for upgrade and workstations. Any of these that you place down need to be within 2 metres of the workstation that you're planning on upgrading. You can see some yellow dots. They will aim towards the workstation that it's linked to. That is in range and you're all good. Now let's make that stag breaker and move on. Now we'll show you why I think it's definitely worth investing your time in crafting this awesome weapon. Putting the stag breaker in your hotbar will make it more convenient when you need it and a group of monsters are on you. Just a couple of melee and an archer, let's deal with these. As you can see with the stag breaker just at level one before you've done any upgrading to it, one hit and it will take off over half their health. Most of the skeletons you'll be able to get rid of with just two to three hits. Any of the archers it's even easier to deal with, you can just use the trees and the rocks to your advantage, hide behind them so they can't hit you at all, and the AoE damage from the stag breaker easily dispatches them. Great overall utility weapon, and of course you can't beat a bit of hammer time. Now, let's talk about protection. There's two different routes you can go down on the Bronze Age. You can either go for the troll armor or the bronze. The bronze armour does give you slightly more protection, but I find it does also slow you down and drains your stamina too much. To get a full set of troll armour, including the cape, you're going to need to kill 5 of the trolls, because they drop 5 skins each time. Always craft the best bow you can, and it's good to upgrade them as much as possible also. Not just with the trolls, but many of the monsters, the best way to get rid of them is the bow and arrow. It's really handy if you can spot the trolls from a distance, that way you can get the sneak attack in with the arrow, and doing a lot more extra damage. If you don't get the sneak attack in, not a problem, it'll take you just a little bit longer to kill them because you won't have the extra damage at the start. The trolls are weak to piercing damage, that's why bows and arrows work very well against them. For that and a bit of damage, I also use fire arrows. To craft these, you'll need some feathers from the seagulls, some wood and some resin. As you can see by the trolls health bar, getting in that first sneak attack makes a big difference. There's two types of trolls you're going to come across. The ones that throw the rocks at you, but that doesn't do much damage until they get up close and do the double smash. The more dangerous ones are the ones here that swing the big tree. Keep an eye on your stamina bar so you can always run away and don't let them get too close. This one gets too close and you can see what happens with just one swing. This was obviously all in the name of the science and just to demonstrate it for you. And even with two pieces of troll armour, it nearly killed me with one hit. Don't rush the fight with the trolls, just keep your distance so you can shoot and always keep an eye on your stamina bar. I'm keeping this one out in the open just for video purposes, but if you go into the trees you can use the terrain to slow them down a lot as well. If any other monsters join the fight whilst you're dealing with the troll, I recommend either running away or trying to take them out first. If the troll gets too close and swipes with the branch, it would also do damage to the other monsters. It can be risky, but also a very effective way of dealing with the other monsters. If there's any ever a doubt of you winning the fight, there's no shame in running away and coming back in this game. It's a lot quicker than dying and running back to collect your corpse. And that's the big fella down. And now we're going to be looking for the cause. 
Not those cores, but the cores we're after are in the burial chambers. You're going to need five certain cores for the kiln and five for the smelter. There's a couple of different ways you can deal with the skeletons. Let's see what's down here first. The ghost is the strongest mob you're going to get down here. Unfortunately, this one's right at the entrance. What you want is a one-handed mace or the two-handed stag breaker because all skeletons are weak to blunt damage. If you come across a ghost right at the entrance and you're struggling a bit, just go out, let your health regen and go back in again. Great thing about these burial chambers, a lot of them have got the doors in the passageway. You can just leave the door shut and kill the skeletons behind it using the stag breaker. It's a lot easier and a lot safer clearing out the burial chambers in this fashion. Although unlucky with the ghost at the entrance, also a nice bonus in this burial chamber, there's a couple of calls and the red tablet which will give the location to the Ardwells. In each of the burial chambers you get between 4 and 6 of the certain calls, so with a couple of chambers you should be able to build yourself a kiln and a smelter. Smelting any of the ore seems to take forever, I'll show you a way of speeding that up now. Load the smelter up fully, you're going to need 20 of the coal and 10 of your ores. Coal in one side and the ore in the other. After you've loaded up your smelter, all you need to do is pop back to your bed. And when you wake up nice and refreshed in the morning, well clearly I don't look rested and I've done my back in, lifting all the ore into the smelter. Let's try this again. I've just loaded up the smelter in the kiln again to show you. Well it's not a very good morning at all, my back is clearly put out again. I do love server crashes. Third time's a charm. And I hope this doesn't happen to you and it's just a stability issue on this day. And let's show you what's supposed to happen after a quick nap, all your ore will be processed. After you've smelted your bronze and you've upgraded your weapons and your armour if you've chosen to do so, next thing I recommend you build is a cart. These are great for storage and for bringing back a lot more wood and ore to your base. The carts are cheap to craft, all you need is 20 wood and 10 of the bronze nails. Another tip, I wouldn't actually bother crafting them in your base. I'm just doing this to show you the storage capacity. You're better off taking the materials with you and building one when you've done your gathering and you want to come back. They can also take a bit of damage on bumpy terrain so keep an eye on them in case you need to repair them also. After you've got yourself a nice established base and you want to go travelling around further, that's when the portals really do come in very handy. You need 20 of the fine wood, 10 grey dwarf eyes and 2 of the certain cores to be able to craft one. When you're placing them down, the symbols that you see signify the front of it, the back is just plain. You need to place down 2 of the portals to create a link between them. The naming is important and it is case sensitive. So if they're not named exactly the same, you will not create a link. I spent hours deliberating what to call mine. I came up with Boo. The portals are great for creating links to other biomes and also when you find a boss location. A great way to use these, when you've scouted out a boss location, pop down a portal close by, obviously not too close, and make sure it's protected by a fence or a wall, as monsters in the area will attack it and destroy it. This way, when you're ready to take on the boss and you've upgraded your weapons and armour and you've got all your foods, you've got a quick way of getting back to take it on. The one downside to the portals are you can't travel through them with any metal or ore on you unless it's in the form of weapons and armour of course. The last thing you need to know about in the Black Forest is the Elder Boss. Check out this video next and I shall tell you all about it. I hope this helped you out in some way. See you soon and take it easy.